I've been on the HTMX hype train for some time now, and this time I want to talk about how and why I think HTMX is going to be what saves template engines. So over the past several years, we've been shifting away from using template engines to adopting this idea where anytime our application needs some form of dynamic interactions on the client side, we tend to shift all of this over to some kind of front end framework to take care of all of that. Now, there's nothing wrong with this approach. In fact, I use it. I recommend it in many applications, but I'm a little bit sad to see so many people abandoning template engines. Me personally, I like them besides the fact that some of them have some funny looking syntax. I'm a little bit sad to see them become a thing of the past. Well, that is until now. And I wrote an article explaining my reasoning behind why I think HTMX is what's going to be what saves them. And I'm going to go ahead and just break this down and we'll pick this apart. HTMX saved template engines. I've joined the HTMX hype train and for a good reason. If you use Django's built-in template engine or one similar to it, then I believe HTMX can be the solution you need once your template engine reaches its limits. Template engines are a great tool, but they also have some obvious limitations when it comes to building out dynamic web apps. HTMX solves many of those limitations without the need to write your own JavaScript code. So template engines are good for rendering data out, but when it comes to creating that interactive experience, this is where you're gonna to need to write a bunch of your own JavaScript code if you wanna create that interaction, or you're gonna to have to go to some kind of client-side framework. So they're only good for rendering data, not that interactive experience. For several years, I completely abandoned template engines and dismissed them as a tool only useful for rendering content. I reached for our front end framework for any dynamic updates requiring more than just a few lines of JavaScript. I didn't like that this was the case, but I still have nightmares from the time I tried to build out a massive application that required an extremely interactive UI. As a Python developer, I nearly pulled my hair out trying to learn JavaScript in order to build out interactive features into my application. So this is a theme that I see quite a bit, especially as someone that teaches Django, Flask, FastAPI, basically a lot of Python based web frameworks. The issue here is that you have Python developers that don't know JavaScript and they're trying to build out these full stack web apps. And when it comes time to build these dynamic interactions, they're now having to figure out how to write their own JavaScript code. And this is quite tough because they're working within two languages. And if they do write JavaScript code, there's a chance that they just learn it. And it's gonna be really clunky, insecure, and just bad code. And this is kind of where I was at, where as I was building it, I was trying to learn multiple things at once and it just became a nightmare very fast. And I don't recommend doing this. Knowing the pain of having to write custom JavaScript in conjunction with a template engine, especially as a non JavaScript developer at the time. So this was my specific case where I was new to Python and now I'm learning JavaScript is exactly why I fell in love with HTMX. What HTMX brings to the table is a way for developers to extend the capabilities of template engines where they fall short. So now we can not only render out content dynamically, we can create an interactive experience within our UI while writing less or no JavaScript. This is something I would have benefited from greatly if I had this back then. Looking back in hindsight, it did force me to learn a bunch of JavaScript and really figure out the fundamentals, but this is a pain that I really didn't have to go through if I had something like HTMX because my UI was interactive and I think I could have gotten away with most of it simply by learning a little bit of HTMX and plugging it into my application. For those of you that don't know template engines, this right here is a function on the server side. And this is kind of the idea of how template engines work. Regardless of what you're using, you're gonna have some kind of function where you render out some HTML files, so in this case, index.html. And with that, you can also make some requests to your database and get some data and then render that data with your template. And that data is now gonna be available in your template. So here we take our post and our total from our database. We pass them through as we render this to the client. And then in our template engine, different template engines are gonna have different syntax here. But in this case, double curly braces is gonna be able to render out variables. So we can pass in our total and then we can render out with a for loop all of our posts and we render out the post name. So that's what template engines are really good at is simply rendering this data out. Where template engines fall short. The challenge begins when you want to send data to the server and update content dynamically without loading a new page. In this scenario, we have two options. Option one, write your own JavaScript for dynamic interactions. Option two, build an API layer between your backend and use a front end framework. So this is one where in option one, if you're writing JavaScript code with a template engine, unless you know JavaScript very, very well, it's really risky and I wouldn't recommend this approach. There's a good chance that you're gonna write bad code as I mentioned before. So option one is gonna require you to know a lot of JavaScript. 
option number two kind of creates the same issue for those developers that maybe don't want to write a bunch of JavaScript or they're working with a Go backend, Python, whatever backend you're using. You just want to build dynamic interactions without going into that JavaScript ecosystem. Well, in option number two, using a front-end framework, you're going to need to learn a lot of JavaScript, and then you're also going to need to learn the framework that you're working within. So both of these kind of have the same issue, that not that there's anything wrong with the options themselves, but they create the same problem for non-JavaScript developers. So what if we didn't have to settle for option one or two? This is where HTMX comes into play, providing us with option number three. HTMX in a nutshell. HTMX is a JavaScript library that allows us to build dynamic web apps while writing less JavaScript. So you can still write JavaScript. In fact, I would recommend knowing some JavaScript while you're using it, but you don't have to rely so heavily on it. It extends the capabilities of HTML by providing attributes so we can perform event-driven AJAX requests right within our HTML while writing or without writing a single line of JavaScript. With these requests, HTMX does not expect JSON data in the response as you might be used to, but HTML content blocks instead. These HTML blocks can be used to swap out different parts of our UI. Here's kind of the core idea of how an HTMX request looks. So here we have a button, and with this button, we can make a request to our server by simply adding in a few attributes. So with HTMX, once added into our application, we can add in something like HX git. This is gonna send a request to the endpoint of data. Then we can say, okay, go ahead and swap the outer HTML and then set the target of the element that we wanna swap out. So we make the request, we get this container from the server side, we're gonna bring this back, and this is gonna swap out this div right here that contains this ID. So we simply make a request, target an element, and then decide how we wanna swap that data out. So that's kind of the core idea here. Now, HTMX with the template engine, this is where things get really cool. So let's look at this example, which uses HTMX with a built-in Django template engine. The objective here is to make any item on the left side column clickable and update the page content on the right with the item details without refreshing the page. So we wanna create sort of like a single page application experience. So here we have this one container right here that contains our post snippets. Then we have our page container and any item that we're clicking on here. So one of these blue items here, we wanna swap out the page details or maybe just this div, the content within here. And we wanna make a request, get some content and repopulate the data without refreshing the page. So in this case, this is how we wanna accomplish this. So here's that left side div with the template engine for loop here. We simply render out the data. And then within the div, as we have our body here, so we have our page or post title, our post body, we simply add in this div wrapper that allows us to click on that div. It makes a request to the endpoint of post and then the post ID. We target the page container, which is right here now. And we say, okay, go ahead and swap out the inner HTML with the response that we get. And the response is gonna be that page content block. So we simply make the request and then swap it out right here. And that's how we're able to update it and how HTMX and template engines work well together. So when I tested this out, there were a few obvious benefits with this type of request. So the first one was faster page speed since we didn't have to re-query data and we didn't have to re-render the page on every request. So right here, we're rendering out all our post list and if there's a lot of data in this list, Anytime we click on one of these posts and we want to keep that list on the left side, we have to re-render that out. Maybe we can do some caching to fix that, but HTMX makes this so easy where all we need to do is swap out page content. So page speed increased because we're now no longer having to re-query our database and we don't need to repaint the DOM every single time. Now, the next benefit was a better user experience because now we're simply updating the DOM and we can take advantage of things like load spinners. We're not having to refresh the page every single time, depending on the user's browser experience and how fast their internet is. We don't have to update this. So overall, it creates a better experience because they're still within the page. Swapping multiple elements. With HTMX, we can be extremely flexible with how we return content and extract data from these responses. In any given response, we can return multiple elements, therefore updating more than one piece of the UI in a single request. In this scenario, we can let the elements in the response dictate which part of the UI they will update and how to perform the swap. So typically when we make a request, we add in how we want everything to happen right here. We set the target and we tell it, hey, this is how we want you to swap the element. Well, what we can do is not add this part in and instead 
in our response, we can respond with multiple items here and let those items dictate how they swap the elements out. So in this case, we return a div with a total, and then we also return a page container. So let's say we're adding items or deleting items. We want to be able to update the entire page with multiple UI elements. So in this case, we have the ID of total, and we can perform something called an out of bounds swap, and we simply set this to true. So what HTMX is going to do here is it's going to look for another item within our page that has the ID of total. So by setting this to true, it's basically saying, go ahead, find the other item on the page that has total, swap it out with a new item here. So this way we can update the post total anytime we need to actually maybe update like a count or just make sure data is in sync. Now the other item, we can also perform an out of bounds swap. But in this case, instead of just setting this to true, we want this div right here to be placed into another item. So the target here, we can set it right here. We can say, okay, the target element is the page container go ahead and set the inner HTML. So really we're doing the same thing that we did here, except for we're allowing the response to control how it gets placed within our UI. Selecting elements from a response. So this is where things get kind of interesting. Instead of creating a custom response with each request, so this is where we either respond with a single content block or multiple blocks that we wanna to use to swap out within our UI, HTMX allows us to target a select specific part of our response and perform a swap. So by default, we have access to the HX select attribute, which lets us use a query selector to target a specific item in our response. So let's imagine within our button, we make a request to info and info has multiple items. So that response is like an entire page. Now we don't have to take that entire response and swap it out. What we could do is use HX select and we can say, okay, only give us the item that contains the ID of info details. We use a query selector and we say, only give us this single item, the rest of our response, just ignore it. And then we can take info detail and then we swap out whatever target that we set. We swap out the outer HTML. So we also have the multi-select extension. So how this works is actually a lot like select where we can select a single item from the response, but this allows us to select multiple items from that specific response. So in this case, we can add in multi into HX swap. We specify ID of one, then we say, okay, give us item number two. In this case, we tell it how to swap it out and then the item with the ID of three. And we also say how to swap it out. So this is how this works. We have some kind of request here and we also have the response. So let's say in the response from the client side, we make that request, then the template comes back to the client. And we're just gonna take this right here and we're gonna replicate this request. So here, we'll just throw in the item that's gonna perform that request. So whatever that is, a button, a div, it doesn't matter. But let's say we call this, we say multi-select, give us item one, two, and three. Now in the response, we have item one, two, three, and let's just do something like this just to make it look a little bit different. Then we have item four and five. So let's say our template looks something like this, right? It feels like we need to take all of this and swap it out somehow. We need to utilize every element. Well, in this case, we can say, okay, item number one here, wherever this is at, we can just go ahead and select it. Then we wanna take item two. So let's say this is item two now, and we'll also take item three. Now, if we have item four and five here, we can just ignore these. So because this request right here is telling us we only want item one, two, and three, we're only gonna get those items. So now in the response, this is our UI. We can say, okay, let's go ahead and just grab this item. Let's grab this over, we'll bring it here. Then we only want item two. We'll grab that over and we control how this is swapped on the client side. So that's how multi-select works. Everything else in that template is now gonna be ignored. And this allows us to not have to create custom responses, but maybe reutilize templates that we already have and really just dictate what we want to use and what we want to ignore. So now for the conclusion, the beauty of all this is that we get the flexibility you would normally get with the client side framework within your template engine. Does this mean that we can replace front end frameworks altogether? And I just answer this and I say no. So here's kind of my thinking with this. Template engines are pretty cool, but they reach that limit very fast. We talked about that, kind of gave some examples here. And what I think is gonna happen here is while we're stress testing and pushing the limits of HTMX, I think it's gonna allow a lot of developers that like template engines where they would normally shift away, maybe they're writing too much JavaScript, now they're moving to some kind of front-end framework. 
I think what's going to happen is a lot of applications don't need the full capacity of a front-end framework. There are still cases where a front-end framework is going to do more than what HTMX can do. We still don't know fully where those limits are because people are still building. HTMX is still kind of expanding. Uh, this is just an alternative tool. And until we find where those limits are, I think a lot of people are going to be comfortable within this environment. Some applications just don't need that much. They just need a little bit. And HTMX is going to allow people to kind of stay within that. But I still think there's a time and a place for both. This is just creating another developer tool for a different ecosystem where it kind of lies within that. Part of it is going to be preference. There are cases where you can use both. You decide which one you want to use, but there's also going to be cases where it's just not going to be what you need. But I know as far as the capacity, it's extended template engines. And this is why I hope and I think they're going to be a little bit more popularized because people are just going to stay in that environment a lot longer.